closet for um, the match to a shoe. Maybe six months ago, I find a needle, a syringe. We're gonna have to be careful, because I don't, I, I, I found one. Now, what do we got here? Oh, wow, okay, that's weird. Oh my God. What is that? Pill bottles. What kind of pills have we got here? I don't know, I don't wanna know. I wanna throw them away. I don't think ever before I've seen a person react in such a, a primeval way to a space. This space represents everything dark and evil in Mackenzie's past. So, Mac, I got a ton of questions. I mean, that is such a fascinating experience you had right there. But let me ask something simple to begin with. Why do you want to do the show? Well, um, you know, I, I had been through so much, and the book came out, and I was in rehab, and then I was in rehab with you, and things piled up. And, you know, you walk into my house, and you wouldn't go, oh, my God, what's wrong with this place? It's a mess. It's not. I've been, You've in, your been house. in my house. Yeah, You've it's been fine. in every room in my house. Yeah. But, like, my garage was just filled with so much stuff in my bedroom. It was like I was living the life of an addict without the substance. Mm. And I really, I was approached by the lovely, lovely Peter Walsh and the Oprah Winfrey Network. And I thought, wow, you mean I don't have to do this alone? I can have some help? And so just that's... Just like recovery, you need other people. I could not do it alone. Right, that's Peter? Peter, you there with us in Australia? Uh, I sure am. I sure am. Hi from Melbourne. <laughs> and what did you so to you, you seems like you were deeply invested in Mac and her experience. What did you learn about Mac through this process? Well, look, one thing I learned most of all, I think, is that Mac is incredibly brave. You know, I think we knew that, but but here was a person who I think was very self-aware, saw that the stuff she owned was really dragging her back into some really pretty dark experiences from her past and was really prepared to deal with that in an open and honest way. And you see that play out very dramatically in, this, in the episode. Now, I, I see one aspect of Mac's recovery in, in these stories you guys are telling, which is that sometimes there's the addict in the person knows, don't go there. Don't go to that environment. I think your closet was one of those environments. Yes. Or or that, I hear there's a desk we're going to learn about as we go through the story, that too, that there's something dangerous there. And indeed, there was. But you also brought, brought to light something else for me that I had not thought about, was that there were also things in there that, that had power over you. Tell me about that. Peter taught me that objects have power and that my, my uh, need to hold on to these powerful objects was really, and had nothing to do with my vision of my life going forward. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we found some really dark things. That continue to have power over you. That continue you. to have power over me. Yeah, and Peter, I, I've noticed this too with people that really have problems uncluttering, let's call it that. Um, they have trouble letting go of yep. things. Is that a common thing you encounter? Well, look, I, I think that everybody deals with clutter in some way. And, and for, for me and for the show, clutter is anything that gets between you and the life you would like to be living, whether that's the physical stuff, the way you behave, the stuff in your head. And I think that everyone is in that situation in some way. And I think that's what makes this show so powerful, that it's not just about a celebrity named Mackenzie Phillips, but I think all of us can see ourselves in some way in this show. Yeah, it's funny you say that. I immediately think to myself, when you frame it like that, I think, oh, I got some things I need to get rid of. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not stuff I really want to have with me going <laughs> forward necessarily. Now, now Mackenzie discovers actually some of her father's clothing in the garage, which causes her to have yeah. emotions, of course, concerning their relationships. So watch this. Oh, God, I completely forgot about that bag. So, tell me what... That's one of his shirts that he wore all the time. Okay. Some of his T-shirts. Do you remember these items? I remember this very well. Okay. You and I have spoken about the power of stuff. This shouldn't be here. Okay. Well, then let's, let's then take the power back. Okay. Does any of this feel like the kind of thing that you would want to hold on no, to? Absolutely to remember? not. Okay, then. Absolutely okay, not. Okay, then it goes into the donate pile. I think the thing is that it was such a, a misunderstood relationship. I tried so hard not to demonize him publicly, but the truth is that, that I was abused by him, and, and uh, uh, it's very hard for me to, to see this and to see that I actually held on to it for so long.
And, and Mac, I, I, yeah, I'm sure you're taking well, a deep breath. Uh, I still feel the emotion coming from yeah. you sitting here. Tell me about that experience. Well, I was just shocked. I had completely forgotten that I still had this bag. But on some level, you must have known that's what kept you out of the garage. Some well, part of your body knew it was there, yeah, you know? Of course. I mean, yeah, you know. Uh, and, and, and then when I put all those things into the bin, to the giveaway bin, I realized that that shirt that was in the photograph of me and my father that was, I found in the bag, I needed to save to give to someone who would really appreciate it. And I can't say who that is, but I did pass it on to someone who was very grateful to have it. And even that in and of itself, that I was able to make that gesture to someone I care about very much, is so meaningful to me. Well, I, t I tell you what I like about that. It is, it is being realistic about the power it, the clothing has and then doing something proactive with it rather than just going, ooh, cutting off from it and, and, right. and throwing it out. You and actually handing it over to someone who will actually turn, put it on and go, wow. Turning it over. Yeah. Now, Mackenzie not only gets rid of the desk on which she used to use substances, she actually smashes it to pieces. Watch this. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Smashing it, it breaks open, and there's an empty cocaine baggie that had been stuck to the top of the desk just there. Look at that. It's a bag that held cocaine. That's amazing. Wow, that... Whoa. Smash it. Smash that bag. <laughs> Taking a sledgehammer to something that had so much power, and then it, it, was, it was incredible. Talk about full circle. Amazing. It's dead. And I'm not. Good shame. P Peter, as uh, <laughs> someone that has, has known Mackenzie and cares deeply about her, known her for a long time, that's a, that's a big experience. I, I could see what she was going through. Did all that surprise you, and did you learn more about Mackenzie through that particular experience? You know, Dr. Drew, one of the things I've seen that when someone takes possession back of their life, and you know, I've seen you work through this with people too, that it really transforms them in ways that I don't think anyone expects. And you will see in this show that the, the physical transformation of Mac, that she looks different, she reacts different when she takes possession back of her life by letting go of the stuff that kept dragging her to a place where she shouldn't be and didn't want to be. And, you know, I see it constantly. I'm, I'm always so thrilled to see it. And the transformative power of decluttering and organizing, I think, is incredible to watch. And, and it's, it's well, humbling and it's wonderful. A couple things I would say is one is people are always looking for behaviors, things they can do to make the inside better. This is a nice lesson in that. And the other thing, Peter, it's interesting you would bring that up, uh, how she looked, because during the tape I said, Mac, look at you, look, look at how relieved <laughs> yeah. you look, right? And when, that, when they come back to yeah. the interview, you look so deeply relieved by you all know, this. It was, it was such a yeah. beautiful experience yeah. for me.